Testing 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Ichi Ni Sanchi, Go Rokyo Sichi, Hq Ju. Hello guys, welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and today extremely exciting video is they're going to be doing some side-by-side -side comparison with the Pico Neo 3 Pro and also its little brother the Pico Neo 2 and the HP Reverb G2 so that's coming up right away and also guys we are doing a giveaway on the channel to celebrate the 10,000 subscribers of a brand new HP Reverb G2 who is sponsoring us who is sponsoring us a brand new HP Reverb G2 so I'm very excited about this as well as a brand new pair of cyber shoes Ooh, so that's going to be very exciting guys I'm trying to get B haptics on board as well but do make sure you hit the enable bell notification after you subscribe so you're notified of the competition entry rules this will be coming in the next week or so everyone's at the O conference in America at the moment so give me a little time but this is going to be very exciting and we're going to give away some keys and a whole bunch more as well all right guys let's transition over to the screen and by the way I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel and a huge welcome back of course to all our regular subscribers and awesome sorry regular viewers and awesome subscribers because uh, yeah you guys are super awesome so let's see if you can guess uh, first what you're going to be seeing we're going to be going inside of Steam VR home to begin with uh, so let me just open this and let's see whether you can actually guess which lens or which VR headset this is to begin with. Now don't worry so much about the flickering. This is maybe something to do with the frequency of the light coming onto the camera. I'm using an iPhone 7 by the way uh, that I'm trying to place on the lens moving the VR headset um, you know with the camera is a little bit tricky and do leave me a comment below to let me know um, you know any tips and tricks that you have to film stuff this is the only VR headset that has this flickering funny enough it could also be due because the number of frames uh, per second could be rolling higher um, you know around 50 frames per second on the filming from the image rendering inside of the VR headset which could also create the flicker when using a camera uh, but as you can tell there is a little bit of um, you know distortion on the sides I have uh, the clue that I'll give you for this specific lens is that it is pretty clear I have to admit the colors are not too saturated and also um, uh, this is another thing of the iPhone 7 as you can tell there's um, you know a lot of contrast between the whites the whites are very bright there and this is because of the phone when you put your eye on the lens or near the glass uh, you know you won't have any issues whatsoever either and then let me go outside I will reveal do leave a comment below let me know which one do you think this is hopefully you didn't see the file name <laughs> that would be great but let me know in the comments below which one do you think this is uh, we have the Pico Neo 3 Pro the Pico Neo 2 and also the HP Reverb G2 um, you know but as you can tell it is pretty clear in terms of you know the branches uh, the trees there uh, there's generally more blue in the sky I have to to let you know about this um, but yeah it doesn't look too bad other than the flickering it really doesn't look too bad there isn't I'll give you another clue there isn't too much um, th there's a bigger there's quite a good sweet spot uh, and there is also some pixelation bleeding of the colors on the sides uh, but you really have to move your eyeballs to find those um, you know of, of some spillage of the blue the red and also the greens so do leave a comment below. I'm about to reveal the lens for this one. This is actually the Pico Neo. Is it the Pico Neo 2 or the Pico Neo 3 Pro, guys? Last chance. It is the Pico Neo 2. All right, next lens. Uh, let's go back inside, uh, inside of... I'm going to use the same resolution. Oop, let me let me change let me go to the indoor first there we go wrong resolution sorry here we go so now we're inside so as you can tell it looks uh, a little bit more I don't know does it look more clear to you less clear to you I'm trying to give you a hint there try to picture try to imagine which lens which VR headset this is is this the Pico Neo 3 Pro or is this the HP Reverb G2 uh, but you can tell that it is pretty clear um, 
you know, there's good sweet spot there. The lens is capturing the image pretty well. Uh, you can see that the contrast on the shadows are pretty nice. And also the sky is pretty clear. You can tell the blue there. And also uh, the silhouette of the tree at the back over there is pretty good. Uh, there is, of course, no flickering. Uh, probably, uh, again, maybe due to the uh, frequency of uh, the lens. Or it could be due to um, the number of frames that are rendered per second uh, in the lens as well. Could be around 30 or 24, which means that we don't get so much flickering when placing the iPhone 7 uh, camera on the actual lens as well. You could see a little bit of, of course, uh, some uh, some of the blurring around the lens because the the, the lenses of course are uh, you know round as well and just to let you know that every single lens today is a Fresno lens that's been tested and also um, Fresno means that basically there are rings built around the lens in order to render the image to be as flat as possible um, and then also we are they're all using LCD panels none of them are OLED which generally means that the colors you know would be gray and the shadows are not so contrasty between the blacks and the uh, brighter colors however with the HP Reverb G2 um, the colors are generally more contrasty so uh, believe me, when, when you're in the dark, it is very dark. So for horror kind of stuff, ooh, you really get the goosebumps. Um, and then here, as you can tell, you know, the, it's really not too bad. For this lens, I'm about to reveal it. Guys, do comment below. Let me know what you think. HP Reverb G2? Or is this the Pico Neo 3 Pro? Because it is pretty clear. It's pretty good. It is the Pico Neo 3 Pro, guys. And I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison. So do hang around for that video as well by the way and uh, also just to let you know some more information that i am using the pico air Byte, i call it which is basically the air link using the wireless streaming technology to the pc but i will be doing other videos where i'll be sent the cable uh where we'll get 4k resolution um you know for the for the pico neo 3 pro um, you know, but everything is side by side at the moment and is, uh, sorry, a uh, wireless at the moment. And I'm also uh, filming at 72 hertz. There is the option, by the way, to, for the Pico Neo 3 Pro, you have the option to stream wirelessly at 90 hertz uh, or 72 hertz, depending on the computer that you have. And also uh, the option to have small resolution, standard resolution, or high definition resolution. So here I'm rendering, I'm streaming at high def, by the way, and this was the 72 hertz. I will be doing side by side at 90 hertz in just a moment. And let me just show you what it looks like. Let's see whether you would have guessed if this was the HP Reverb G2. So let me just transition over very quickly. Go to the files. Go to the HP Reverb G2. And then let's do the inside. So this is the HP Reverb G2. As you can tell, um, to me, the quality just looks much, much better. It's so much more contrasty. I find it hard to believe that this is an LCD screen, to be honest with you. Um, now to me, this looks much more like an OLED uh, kind of you know, technology. Um, you know, I mean, it is pretty amazing. Uh, we will talk about the differences in just a minute, uh, you know, in terms of sweet spot, contrast, and all this, when I do the side-by-side -side comparison uh, with the Pico Neo 2 and Pico Neo 3 Pro. Um, but, you know, it, it just looks so much sharper and so much better. Uh, but again, do remember that I'm not streaming. This is a tethered PC VR headset. A cable is running directly as well. Um, but you know, let's let's do the side by side comparison now. In fact, uh, we'll start we'll start with the Pico Neo two. So let me bring the new Pico Neo two up. Let me just pause. There we go, and then let me go and fetch the Pico Neo three Pro. Are we going to be doing the ninety hertz? Uh, we'll, we'll do the 70 hertz to start off with. I'll do a side by side with the 90 hertz in just a minute. 
Okay, so I'll put the Pico Neo 3 Pro here. And then I need to use another program. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, and then uh, let me just find a little, a nice little sweet spot there. Now, don't worry so much about the bright whites, as I mentioned. This is about, this is because of the actual, uh, you know, phone. Okay, I'm trying to get a spot where, okay, this should be okay enough, good enough. So now just to give you some insights as well, what, what's really funny is that basically what Pico have done between the Pico Neo 3 Pro and the Pico Neo 2, let me just show you very quickly before we do the side-by-side -side comparison. They've actually done two things. The first thing is, let me just position the light very quickly so you can see. Now, this is the Pico Neo 2, okay? This is the Pico Neo 2, and this is the Pico Neo 3 is in, is in, is on, in my right hand. So the first thing they've done is basically um, the size, the diameter of the actual lens itself is smaller on the Pico Neo 3, this one. Okay, I'm trying to get you a, because everything's inverted for me. Okay, there we go. Got it? Yes, got it. Let me just, there we go. So the actual diameter of the lens is smaller. Uh, I haven't actually measured with the tape measure, but I would guess that it's at least 0 0.5 mm diameter smaller on each side with the Pico Neo 3, which is this one here. Uh, and it's about one, 0 0.5 or 1 cm bigger on the Pico Neo 2, which is this one here. So that's the first thing that they've actually done uh, in terms of the differences in the VR headsets uh, for the lens, which I find amazing. So this basically means that when you put your eye against the lens, you, you would generally have less sweet spot because the lens is smaller, right? Uh, now, the other thing that they've actually done, let me just show you this, is if we go to the um, the VR compare, so VR compare uh, Pico Neo 2, which is here, there we go. So for the, let me just make it bigger. So the first thing, the other thing that they've done is they've reduced the resolution. So for the Pico Neo 2, uh, it, it is 204800 20, 20, by 2160 per eye. Uh, and on the Pico Neo 3, it is 1832 by 1920 per eye, which is pretty amazing considering that, you know, they've brought down the resolution. However, um, the, the refresh rate is higher on the Pico Neo 3 but, as I just mentioned, you can choose 72 hertz, or 75 hertz, or 90 hertz. And the first comparison that I'm going to show you is actually going to be at the same, uh, it's going to be at 72 hertz versus 75 hertz, just so you know. The other thing that is different is the um, field of view is different as well. So it's 100 uh, degrees horizontal by 100 degrees vertical on the Pico Neo 2, and it's slightly less uh, by 10 degrees on the vertical, at 90 degrees vertical uh, and 98 degrees, uh, so three degrees less on the horizontal for the Pico Neo 3 Pro. Okay, so that's the other difference. But however, surprisingly enough, you're gonna see that the quality, um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you decide which one is the better quality to begin with, and then I'll reveal to you which one is the better quality and whether this uh, you know, reduction in resolution and reduction also in the size of the actual um, lenses itself, which is actually compromise the quality of the lenses or not. Because remember, the Pico Neo 3 Pro is kind of a copy or clone to the Oculus Quest 2 when it comes to the resolution of the VR headset. It's exactly the same resolution. And I would imagine it's, a, it's more or less the same lens 
technology they used as well for the Pico Neo 3 Pro. So this is going to be extremely, extremely interesting, um, you know, to do the comparison. So let's compare now. Here we go. So the Pico Neo 3 Pro is on this side, and this is the Pico Neo 2 on the left-hand side. So as you can tell, um, it is sharper on the actual Pico Neo 3 Pro, which is running at 72 hertz versus the Pico Neo 3, uh, Pico Neo 2 on the right hand side, it is actually better quality, but I have to say that it is very close. It is very, very close. The biggest difference um, for the Pico Neo 3 and the Pico Neo 3, sorry, the Pico Neo 3 Pro and the Pico Neo 2, the biggest difference, let me just pause here, there is one massive difference between the two lenses, I have to say. The biggest difference between both lenses is that on the side of the lenses, up and down, is that basically the uh, bleeding of the actual pixels. Now on the Pico Neo 2, This is the Pico Neo 2. You can tell by the cameras at the front. The bleeding on the pixels here, on the ring, near the ring, especially the near ring, or about 0.5 mm before, basically there is, first of all, there's no, okay, I'll talk about this separately. Um, there is a bit of bleeding on the pixels of the red, the blue, and the green. So if you position your eyeball, not your head, your eyeball, and you look down or you look up or left, left or right, you'll definitely see the pixels, some aberration uh, colors that are bleeding uh, of the pixels. So you'll definitely see that for sure, as well as course, because it's a Fresno lens, which means that it, there is some curve to the lenses. Um, you'll also see some blurring on the side of the lens as well. However, with the Pico Neo 3, and I think this is an amazing um, change that they've been able to make, is that on the Pico Neo 3, and you can tell because of the cameras on the front, the four cameras on the side, sorry, of the front. Um, now, I'll talk about this separately. There is no such bleeding anymore on when you look with your eyeball up, down, left or right. There is no bleeding anymore. Uh, very slight bleeding, but really, really the difference between the Pico Neo 2 and the Pico Neo 3 is night and day. So they've done amazing uh, in terms of, you know, correcting this, really amazing, just really amazing. And the fact that the lenses are smaller as well and the resolution has been reduced, but it produces better result, is pretty amazing as well. It's got more RAM inside, uh, you know, it's, it's just a much better CPU or GPU inside. Um, so all these kind of things goes to show that even if you reduce the quality of the resolution and the diameter of the lenses, you can actually get more out of the VR headset. So that's pretty amazing. Now, the other thing is, let's talk about IPD. I mentioned in the previous video, do go and check out this video, that basically there is, the, there is a way to adjust the IPD. They're free. Let me just take this off. There we go. So there we go. So there is a way to adjust the IPD. Now, the problem is, is that if you put them completely in, you're no longer going to have a uh, 90, 98 degree field of view. Impossible. You will not. In fact, this is my IPD. Unfortunately, it's the one where you put completely in. But when you're completely out, oh, the IPD, the field of view is great. You know, it's awesome. It's fully immersed. Uh, you can see everything around you. There's no tunnel vision. Uh, well, much less tunnel vision. It feels great. It feels very comfortable to be in VR. However, with my IPD, which is completely inside, um, it feels like I've gone back two years. It feels like I got the Oculus Go on my head and I can basically see some kind of tunnel vision, some kind of, um, you can see these, these kind of things like this on the side. So you, you, you feel, instead of looking like this, you're looking like this. So you can actually see something um, you know, on the side of your headset. And when you have them completely out, it's more like this, so you don't really see them so much. Um, so that's the issue with the IPD adjustment. Do know that you will lose field of view 
when it's completely open, no loss of field of view, uh, but when it's completely inside like this, you will lose field of view. And from time to time as well, when it's completely in, uh, and also sometimes when it's completely out, you will at some stage see a blue ring around the lenses, especially when it's very bright, uh, in a very bright, bright outdoor kind of area, not so much in the dark areas, but when you got light, in the bright, bright, brighter light areas in the game, you will see around the lens, you will see like some kind of blue ring coming up from time to time. So do note this. I think this is very important for you to know, uh, you know, and there are timestamps in the description and the pinned comments below. Uh, so, you know, you can refer back to this in the future uh, if you come back to, to the video. So let me just transition back again and let's finish the side-by-side -side comparisons between the two. So on here, I just want to go back. Here we go. So, you know, you can tell it's, I mean, the, the, the differences are very, very slight, to be honest with you. Uh, the colors are not so saturated. They're pretty good, very, pretty much natural. Um, and also do remember that I'm streaming wirelessly using the Airbyte from the Pico Neo 2 and Pico Neo 3 Pro to the PC. There's no cable. Do enable the bell after you subscribe as I will be receiving the the, full, the cable that will give me 4K resolution uh, in the VR headset and I'll do more videos comparing with the HP Reverb G2. Uh, but yeah, I mean, so far so good in terms of the quality here. Um, you know, they're very... It is better in the HP Reverb, uh, sorry, in the Pico Neo 3 Pro, but Again, it's very almost the same, almost the same, um, you know, so it just goes to show that the previous Pico is doing justice for itself, I have to admit. If it wasn't for the color bleeding, um, then the Pico Neo 2 would definitely almost win, almost win. But because, of course, there's bleeding in the Pico Neo 2 when you look down, um, you know, I'm just trying to get the shot there where I'm panning over. There we go, here. Uh, you know, it's almost the same. Almost the same. But it is better in the Pico Neo 3 Pro, I have to admit. So, you know, they, they've done a great job. Now, let me do a comparison side by side with the 90 hertz uh, refresh rate. So let me just get that. Go to Pico Neo 3 Pro, 90 hertz. There we go. Okay, so we'll go back here. Here we go. So now 90 hertz refresh rate means you get more frames per second in the rendering. And generally speaking, what it will mean is um, you will, several things will happen. So basically, first of all, um, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, you will have the ability to see what's coming next faster than your rival, let's say if you're playing a multiplayer or in an esports, for example, uh, because you have more frames per second, it's smoother, so the action happens faster. The other thing is you have less bleeding uh, and less sh ghosting, it's called, uh, in between. So, you know, basically imagine this is the same as this, right? Uh, in 90 hertz refresh rate, perhaps, uh, is very slight. Let's just imagine it's very slight ghosting. But then in 72 hertz or 75 hertz refresh rate, the ghosting is more. So you'll see more blurry it will be less sharp, less crispy, more blurriness in between the objects when you have slower refresh rates. So normally speaking, the pixels should be crisper, less blurry, sharper, uh, and also, you know, the quality will just be better. But the difference between 75 and 90 hertz refresh rate is not going to be huge, but it should be slight. So you should see something uh, that's good enough. So um, let's just check it out very quickly. So you can tell that, by the way, you know, you can read the text very well. The little automobile tattoo here, you can read it very well. Uh, in the 72 refresh rate as well, you can read it without a problem. Um, the colors are more or less the same. To be honest, you know, there isn't so much of a massive difference. I would say that the biggest difference between the 72 hertz refresh rate and the 90 hertz refresh rate is that if you have a less of a powerful CPU, you will be able to render the quality here on HD much more easily than you would if you're going to use 90 hertz refresh rate. Because even me with an RTX 2070, 
you know, running a, an RTX 2070 on an i7 9700K, sometimes I have issues. I can't render the games on HD at 90 hertz, but I can uh, on 72 hertz. So, you know, there you go. This just goes to show. So uh, do hit the enable bell after you subscribe. I said we'll be doing more exper experimentation, rendering different games at different resolutions, different re different frames per second as well, different hertz. Um, you know, so you know, do make sure you stay put for those videos as well. But there is slightly of a difference, of course, in terms of how crispy um, the resolution is uh, in terms of the refresh rate. So I'm just clicking play here. Just to show you. Okay, let me just pause here because this is pretty crisp. And then let me just go here. Where is it? Here we go. So you can see here, for example, let me try to get, I think this is the best I can do. But yeah, it is a slightly crisper, especially if you could look at the cube here. The cube here, you can see how it's a bit sharper. It could be the position of the camera, but generally speaking, I felt I had a sharper experience at 90 hertz compared to 72, but it was slight. It was slight, very slight, uh, but it's a bit like adjusting the IPD. You know, you get like, or, or adjusting the VR headset on your face, you feel like you get that slight little bit more crisper by 5%. That's how I feel when I'm using the 90 hertz. All right, let me compare it on the outside. So let me just get the, uh, the file. So outdoor 90 hertz. Here we go. It's this one here. I'm also going to talk about the resolution um, on the side and the 72 hertz is this one. Here we go. Then let me just try to find nice and sharp to give it justice. Okay, this will give it justice here. And then here, okay, I think. Just trying to give it justice so we have a nice comparison. I think this one here. Yeah, this one will do good. Um, okay, um, so the thing is on both uh, the 72 and the 90 hertz, um, you know, first of all, you can see all the way to the back. You know, it's really good. I'm going to talk about screen door effect in just a moment. Uh, but you can see all the way to the to the back over there, the mountain. You can see the the cloud, the definition of the clouds here. I mean, it's pretty amazing in terms of what you can get out of this VR headset. The quality, considering that we're streaming, we're not using a cable to the PC onto Steam VR Home here. It is pretty amazing. You can tell the quality here, the twigs. Uh, you can't see so much on this one because it's a little bit blurry in terms of the positioning of the camera from the iPhone. Uh, maybe here you can tell. Um, you know, it's a little bit better. You can tell that you can see the twigs here. I mean, it's pretty amazing. You can see the detail here on the stones. Um, you know, I mean, the, the, the detail is there uh, for sure. You can tell the contrast on the mountain over there. Um, it is pretty amazing in terms of the you know I mean on the tree if I, let me just pause here quickly I mean look at the detail on the tree you can tell even the tiny little branches here you can tell the little black spot that's a that's actually a, a you know a bird that is flying in the distance there you can I mean definitely the detail is very good it's very detailed uh, let me just pause here because you can see some more details here on the tree. I'm trying to find a, a spot on the camera. There we go. Here's a nice spot. I mean, look at this. This is the 72 hertz. This is the 90 hertz. Uh, so on the 72 hertz on the left hand side, I mean, look, you can see the specularity in the leaves here. Uh, it, 
it's pretty amazing in terms of detail and here as well it's pretty amazing the detail on the leaves here is really really amazing so you get a lot of performance out of this lens I have to say I'm pretty amazed I will talk about sweet spot in just a in just a moment so do hang around for that uh, and I will do a sweet spot comparison with the HP Reverb G2 especially but here I mean look you can almost almost read the text at the back I can't read it but it certainly does not look pixelated um, on the VR headset at all it just doesn't look pixelated you just can't read it because it's too far but it doesn't look blurry it doesn't look pixelated it looks pretty clear you can also tell uh, the shadows here on the bottom on the floor you know it's very very detailed very detailed very nice I have to say they've done an amazing job uh, you can tell this is glass panel on the glass here here as well on the 72 Hertz uh, you know it's it's pretty there you know pretty there pretty amazing I have to say quality very impressed by this lens let me see if I can uh, get a good comparison there here we go of the tree so you can tell I mean not so much difference you know in terms of 72 Hertz and the 90 Hertz right it looks pretty much the same to me uh, and I will talk about sweet spot in just a moment so just do hang around for that now let, let's go to the um, 90 Hertz I'm gonna keep the 90 Hertz refresh rate I'm gonna do the indoor and then let me bring the HP Reverb G2 which is I think what a lot of people uh, you know are very curious to know about so let me just bring this up do bear in mind guys as I just mentioned that we're not using you know, for for the Asia, for the Pico Neo 3 Pro, we're using um, you know, we're not using the cable. Okay, guys, please please know this. I'm just going to pause here because this is the clearest that I managed to get the shot. And let me bring do the side by side. Okay, there we go. Now. I'm going to talk about sweet spot in just a moment. First of all, the colors of the HP Reverb G2 are more saturated than the Pico Neo 3 Pro. Now, this is completely, you know, this is a complete uh, personal point of view. But personally speaking, I prefer uh, the HP Reverb G2 colors because I prefer a little bit more saturation. Uh, there's less saturation in the Pico Neo 3 Pro, but you could be someone who completely prefers that kind of color scheme. So this is no, uh, this is not a downfall of the actual performance, okay, at all. Performance-wise, it's perfectly fine at the Pico Neo 3 Pro, but the colors are more saturated in the HP Reverb G2. There's also more contrast uh, in the Pico, uh, in the HP Reverb G2. As you can tell here, it's a little bit more gray at the bottom compared to the Pico, uh, the HP Reverb G2 on the left hand side is darker which means that you'll have even more contrast inside of the actual shadow shadows so the shadows will go from gray to, to black but in the Pico Neo 3 Pro um, it will look a little bit more gray overall uh, so less contrast inside of the shadows uh, when comparing the Pico Neo 3 Pro on the right hand side and the HP Reverb G2 the left hand side now the fact that I'm not streaming also the HP Reverb G2 there's the, it's got a cable going directly to the PC you'll notice that there's more detail on the glass here with more um, you know glaring or glossiness or, or specularity when compared to here we lose that detail when we're streaming using the Pico Airbyte I call it Airbyte uh, you could call it Airlink, whatever you want, but I call it Airbyte. Um, you know, on the glass, there's less specularity, less detail on the wood as well. Less specularity on the wood. It looks a little bit more, um, you know, bland, a little bit meh. But on the HP Reverb G2, you can see a little bit more contrast. It's not super apparent. Don't get me wrong. It's not super apparent. But 
it is there. There's also more contrast between the pixels you can tell on the mountain here and the mountain here. It just looks a bit more sharper between the behind of the mountain and the mountain here itself as well. And you can also tell that it's a bit sharper between the side of the dark here of the tree and the white of the um, of the sky compared to here it just looks sharper it also looks sharper here you can see a little bit more color bleeding uh, here it's very slight but you can definitely tell it's less sharp between this door here or the glass panel and the glass panel here it just looks much darker compared to the behind and here so these are the details you're going to lose when you're using you know a pico neo 3 pro streaming to the pc compared to an hp reverb g2 but as i mentioned guys make sure that you hit the enable bell after you subscribe because i'll be doing more side by side through the lens comparisons um when i get the cable in a week or two uh between the pico neo 3 pro and also the HP Reverb G2. Now let's talk about Sweet Spot. Now on the Pico Neo 2, you will have less Sweet Spot compared to the Pico Neo 3 Pro guys. This is pretty amazing. So basically on the Sweet Spot, you will get about, I would say, you need 0.5 mm to 1 cm of Sweet Spot all the way from the lens. So the Sweet Spot starts, you'll lose about here but for the for the Pico for the HP Reverb G2 you lose about here so that's what's very interesting and you can tell you can tell right now you can tell the sweet spot is amazing on the Pico Neo 3 Pro which basically means you can move your um, your 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 eyeballs not your head your eyeballs to the left the right the up or down and you almost won't notice blurriness I mean, you will notice it, but you almost won't notice it. It's pretty amazing on the Pico Neo 3 Pro, but with the Pico Neo, with the HP Reverb G2, you will definitely lose lose sweet spot more uh, uh, sooner than you would with the Pico Neo 3 Pro. So Pico Neo 3 Pro, I have to say, wins hands down on the sweet spot, but it loses hands down on the graphics and the quality of the graphics when streaming with wireless technology it might still win or come very close when using the cable. I don't know. So make sure you enable the bell after you subscribe so you hang around for that video. But I'm pretty amazed by the performance of the Pico Neo 3 Pro when it comes to the sweet spot, which basically means you get more clarity. Um, you get more out of the lens than you would with the, Pico, with the HP Reverb G2 using the Pico Neo 3 Pro. So, you know... Um, if we talk very briefly about, uh, you know, new headsets coming out very soon. Now, the Pico Neo 3 Pro is doing an amazing job for the sweet spot and the clarity. Uh, you also have the Oculus Meta Facebook who are going to release a new headset next year around May, I, I would think. Uh, you also have Valve who are going to release a new VR headset. Uh, you also have Apple who are going to release a VR headset. Uh, you also have a Joker in the mix, you know, Decker who are going to release the Decker gear next year i would imagine as well at some stage and you might have another brand coming out or two brands who knows come out with vr headset so i think hp need to hurry up coming out with another vr headset as well hopefully within the next eight months i think because otherwise hmm, it's going to be very interesting hp are going to be left in the dust i think um, yeah, they're going to have to play catch up, I think, if they don't hurry up. So hopefully there will be an HP Reverb G3 or something uh, coming out in the mix. Not too long in the pipeline. Uh, so let's just go back to the comparison video here. Let me bring the uh, outside, outdoor version. So I'm going to open the HP Reverb G2 first. There we go. This looks super clear. And then the Pico Neo 3 Pro um, at the 90 hertz refresh rate. There we go. Side by side comparison. Let me just pause it and get a clear shot. 
I think I got a clearer shot with the 72. So let me bring the 72 since there isn't that much of a huge difference uh, anyway, to be honest. Uh, through the lens, there we go. Let me see if I got a better shot. Here we go. I think this is clear enough. So, uh, as you can tell, basically, again, it is, I mean, it is sharper. Um, okay, but this could also be due. There we go. So, there we go. Here we go. So, you can see a little, so basically, this, if you look at the top, down, left and right here, so you can see that it starts to blur. Now, this is actually, I would say, pretty accurate. For those who have an HP Reverb G2 will probably agree with me that if you were to look at the very top with your eyeball, uh, it will start to blur like this. So I would definitely say that this would be a good representation in terms of the sweet spot between the HP Reverb G2 on your left hand side and the Pico Neo 3 Pro on your right hand side, uh, you know. But again, the detail is and people who have an HP Reverb G2 will also agree with me on this. Uh, and do leave a comment below if you don't agree, but I think you will agree. Um, you know, the contrast between the textures on the rocks here and the mountains, I mean, with the HP Reverb G2, honestly speaking, you will really forget that you're in VR. Um, you know, and the other thing I want to talk to you about was the screen door effect. Um, if I, there is no screen door effect on both lenses, just so you know. Very difficult to tell if there's a screen door effect on both lenses. Now, excuse me, the screen door effect is basically the mesh that you will see, the rings that you will see on the actual lenses. And then you bring your headset. On the Oculus Quest 1, it was very obvious. You could see a mesh, you could see little dots. It broke the immersion quite a bit. But since uh, these new friends or lenses have come out. HP Reverb G2 was really one of the first headsets when it came out to completely have complete clarity when you put the lenses very close to your eyes and you feel super immersed inside of the actual VR headset. Let me tell you, with the Pico Neo 3 Pro, there is no uh, no screen door effect. Very, very hard to see it. You feel very, very immersed inside. Again, the only way to really see it is if you're in a very dark kind of very this would be where you can kind of see it um, or if you tilt your head to the light suddenly you have some light coming in then perhaps uh, you know you you would see some screen door effect but honestly very very hard to see it so uh, I'll show you again when I get to uh, the point where I'm let me just click play and then you'll be able to see uh, what I mean but honestly speaking it's very slight uh, very hard to see, you know, it's very hard to see the quality as you can tell by, by the HP Reverb G2. Uh, if I go to a place where it's clear in the trees here, again, the trees are much, I mean, the pixels, you can see there's very little bleeding of the pixels between the bright areas and the darker areas. And look at this tweet. I mean, look at how sharp this guy is. Look at this. The detail is amazing in the tweaks here. Uh, I mean, on the Pico Neo 3 Pro, I is still not bad. Don't get me wrong. Let me bring up the 90 hertz very quickly. Uh, it will be this one here. So this is what I mean here. Let me just show you very quickly in terms of the uh, screen door. So you see the rings around the lens here. You can see the, the rings here. Basically, when you put your eye against the glass, very, very hard uh, to see any screen door effect, uh, you know, around the glass. Very, very hard. So let me just find a point where it's clear. Here we go. And then let me go here. So again, let me show you here. So you can see the, the rings, okay, let me just, uh, okay, four seconds, all right. Okay, it's at the beginning, all right. You can do side by side. So the rings on the new Fresnel lenses of the actual Pico Neo 3 Pro are less obvious 
compared to the HP Reverb G2, there are actually more more rings on the HP Reverb G2 than there are on the uh, Pico Neo 3 Pro. So this would render a flatter and crisper um, resolution because there are more rings and they're thinner on the, basically it produces a flatter also uh, image for the HP Reverb G2 compared to here, they're a bit thicker and there's less of them uh, on the Pico Neo 3 Pro i. So I thought this was very, very interesting to show you this. So let me just go back to the tree. Here we go. Here we go. So you can see how sharp the difference is night and day. I mean, the, the HP Reverb G2 is just absolutely amazing in terms of the contrast. Just absolutely, absolutely amazing. Even though the sweet spot on the Pico Neo 3 Pro is hands down better than the HP Reverb G2, but the quality on the HP Reverb G2 uh, compared to using the wireless technology, guys, the wireless Pico Air Byte, um, you know, of course, I can't compare it right now with the cable, uh, but it is much better compared to when using the Air Byte with the Pico Neo 3 Pro. So guys, this was the, today's video. I wanted to do the comparisons, uh, you know, with, with all these various different VR headsets. And also, as I mentioned, do make sure that you're unable to pay off to subscribe because we're doing a huge, massive giveaway of a brand new HP Reverb G2 sponsored by HP, guys. This is, it will be sponsored by HP and also a brand new pair of uh, cyber shoes which are sponsored by Cybershoes too. So make sure you hit the enable bell after you subscribe. Plenty more videos coming in. There are also some issues with the uh, Airbyte, by the way, streaming issues. So I will be doing a video about this very soon as well. So this is another reason to enable the bell after you subscribe. And of course, when I receive the cable for the Pico Neo 3 Pro, I will also be doing, uh, you know, another video comparing this with the cable tethered to the PC, which is put on top here, um, you know, which is supposed to be 4K, guys, 4K resolution. So that's going to be very interesting. Um, now, before I leave this video, every VR headset, as I mentioned, is using an LCD panel and also um, Fresno lenses. Now, the price of the Pico Neo 3 Pro, by the way, is starts at 699 US dollars. This is the Pico Neo 3 Pro. The Pico Neo 3 Pro I, which has foveated rendering, which basically means uh, depending on where you look, it will focus and then the background become blurry. I This is not the Neo 3 Pro I, guys. It's a Neo 3 Pro. Made slight mistake in the previous uh, video. I thought this was um, the Pro because it said Pro and the Neo 3, the ne and the Pico Neo 2 Pro was the I, so I was very confused by that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so there you go. It's from 699 US dollars and 899 US dollars for the Pico Neo 3 Pro I, respectively. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Really love you guys. The next video, because this was a little bit long, I will also be doing a, a thank you and you know uh, doing some shout outs on the next video as well. So look around for that video. But until next time, guys, I'll see you in the comments below. And um, another video. So, see you soon. Au revoir. A bientôt. Ciao.